Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast Series. In this episode, we'll be diving into types. In the last episode, I introduced you to variables. In review, a variable is something that we use to assign data. The way we create a variable is to give it a type, then give it a name, and then assign it that data. The type lets the computer know how to interpret that data. After all, a computer sees data just in ones and zeros. With C Sharp, we have lots of different types at our disposal. And with the use of classes and structs, we can even create our own types. For the most part, when you're just starting C Sharp, you're just going to be using a few of them. And I'll be covering these types in this video. The first type, is the integer, or otherwise known as the int. The int represents a whole number, and as you can see, that number is pretty large. For some of you, that number may be too small, and for that we have the unsigned integer, otherwise known as a uint. You can see here there is no negative number, and it goes up to 4 billion. That again may be too small, but before we review other types, Let's take a closer look at the integer. As mentioned, the integer is just a whole number. But what happens if you divide an integer? Let's say we have the number 5 and we divide it by 2. Can you guess the result? Well, the answer is 2. You would expect 2.5, but the integer discards all floating point information. Now you saw that the integer has a range. What happens if you exceed the range. Let's imagine that we have an integer with the largest possible value and then we add 1 to it. What will happen is instead of incrementing by 1, the number will overflow to the bottom end of the range. This is what we call an overflow error. And for the most part you won't run into them, but when you do they can create a nasty bug as it's hard to track down. For larger data types, you can use the long, and as you can see, the long has a tremendous range. C Sharp also includes smaller bytes. Let's imagine you were counting to just 10. You may not want to use an int for that. You can instead use an s byte, and that goes from negative 128 to 127. Now there's also a byte which goes from 0 to 255. You can see the S byte, that S stands for signed byte, and whereas a byte is assumed it is unsigned. Typically you use bytes when getting information back from a network or so forth. There's also the short, which goes from negative 32,000 to positive 32,000, and if you don't need that negative number, you can use the U short. Typically you choose your type based on how much data you think you'll need. An int is at four bytes. Now, if you're doing a lot of calculations with smaller numbers, it makes sense to use a byte since it contains one byte of data. After all, you wouldn't want to be using a ulong to contain all that information because a ulong contains eight bytes. Now, by itself, that's not a lot of memory, but when you're talking about hundreds or maybe even thousands of ulongs, that those eight bytes quickly add up. A good rule of thumb while beginning is just use the int. If you need to go higher, then possibly use the u int or then use a long. It may be tempting to go with a smaller type based on the numbers that you're using, but these can often bring about overflow errors. For instance, you may be thinking you're working with bytes between 0 to 255, and then you'll get some data that exceeds that limit and now your program will enter an unstable state. When working with C Sharp, any whole number is thought of to be a type of integer. And to use a different type, you're going to use what is known as a cast, which I'll show you later in this video. As we have integers, we also have floating point numbers. And we have a few different types at our disposal. The first is called a float, and it doesn't contain very much data. It only contains four bytes. This would not do with engineering or scientific applications, but for game development, it's fine. Oftentimes, you need much more precision, and for that, you would use a double. And a double contains eight bytes. 
as you can see, eight bytes is a lot, and by using lots of doubles, we quickly accumulate used memory. This is why floats are preferred in Unity. But if you do need to use a double, you have them at your disposal. C sharp defaults to any floating point number as a double. In order to use a float, you have to tell the computer that you actually mean to use it. The way we do this is we type the type float, we give it a name, we provide an equal sign, and then we provide our number. After we provide a number, we put an F after it. This tells the computer that we do not want to use a double, but rather prefer to use the float. Otherwise, the computer will think we're assigning a double to our float variable. We have other types as well. We have a string type, which can contain up to 2 billion characters. A string is just synonymous with text. And finally, we have a bool type, which contains either a true or false. Now, there are several other types available to you, but for now, you should have everything to get started. In this demo, we're going to be playing with some various types. And to do that, I'm going to open my Hello World script. Here you can see we already have some types in progress. A typical type you may use is a double. And I'll just type public, then double. And then I'll just write my double like so. And I'll just set this to 10.1. And this is a double. Now I can also make a float. And to make a float, I simply type public float. And then we'll call this my float like this. And I'll put 10.1 also. Now you'll notice when I save this, I have this red squiggly line underneath it. This is because 10.1 itself is a double. Remember, C sharp defaults to doubles when using floating point numbers. To turn this into a float, I need to put an F after it, and there the red squiggle goes away. Another way you can turn this into a float is through a casting operation. To perform a cast, I simply add two parentheses like that, and then write the word float inside of the parentheses. What this does is it converts this double into a float and assigns it to the variable. But again, for shorthand, we can simply put an F after 10.1, like so. When working with C-sharp, you'll often work with Boolean values, that is true or false values. To create one, you'd simply type public, bool, and we'll just write likes game like so, and we'll just set the value as false. Now, if I save this and return back to Unity, I'll select my cube, and you can see all our new fields in the false and the Boolean field has a checkbox that we can click. Now let's introduce you to your first overflow error. To do this, I'm going to create a byte. I'll type public byte, like so, and I'm gonna write overflow error. And we're gonna set this to 255. Now notice, if I change this to 256 and I save, we see a red squiggle underneath it, and it says, Constant value 256 cannot be, cannot be converted to a byte, meaning the byte has too little information to store this number. So the compiler does catch some errors like that. I'm gonna do this in on disable, and you can see we already have lots of code here. I may wanna keep this code around, but not be in my way. And to do that, I can use comments. A comment simply allows you to write messages in the code that the compiler will ignore. To create a comment, you just put a forward slash and two asterisks. And you'll notice that all this code is now in green, meaning it's going to be ignored. I'll just put another couple asterisks over here and then a another forward slash. Now you can see this is back to being black. Had I not put this closing comment, then the rest of the file would be commented out thus causing errors. You'll see as I save it. And as you can see, we have lots of errors. You may want to write a single comment, and the way you do that is just put two forward slashes. And now let's create our overflow error. The way we do this is type overflow error equals, 
And now we're going to add three to the overflow error. We do this by typing overflow error plus three. So we're adding three to overflow error, and then we're assigning the result of this expression back into overflow error. Now you can see here we have an error. The error reads cannot implicitly in convert type int to byte. What's going on here is that you are adding three, which is an integer, to a byte, and then assigning it back to another byte again. When you add an integer to a byte, the result of that will be an integer. The same goes if you add any smaller type with a larger type. Typically, you don't run into this issue, but if you do, you can always cast the result back to a byte by typing byte, like so. And now we are able to make that addition. Let's print out the result of it. Here we write the result of the overflow error is, and then we print out the overflow error variable. Now I'm going to switch back to Unity. We'll run the game, select this cube, and now I'm going to disable it. And you can see down here, the result of the overflow error is two. Remember, the original overflow error variable was 255, and we added three to it. You may have assumed the error to become negative, and the reason for this is because a byte never contains negative numbers. If you wanted to use negative numbers, you would use a signed byte. This is true for only the byte. For other types, like the int, it is assumed that you can either use it for negative or positive values. And if you only wanted positive values, you would then use the u int or the u long and so forth. Long story short, you'll never find an s int or an s long. And now for your challenge. Your challenge, I want you to create a new script and I want you to call this Mad Libs. In it, I want it to contain several variables that you can set in the inspector. The first one I want to be my name and it should be a type of string. The next variable is favorite food and that should also be a type of string. The next variable is amount and that will be a type of double. Finally, create a bool and call it likes to share. I want you to attach this script to the cube and when the user disables the cube, the console should display a string which I've added to this page. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.